Hi Peter students, how are you doing? Welcome to Science Lesson Harapan Prestasi Primary School with me, Ms. Rasa. Today, we are going to continue our lesson in Unit 1, Living Things. So, what do we have for today? What can living things do? So, are you ready? Let's start! Before we start, let's know the learning objective for this topic. The student will recognize what living things can do and describe how living things and non-living things are different. In this topic, you also learn the vocabulary such as move, reproduce, sit, grow, sense, and respond. Now, let's start for the first one here. Can living things move? Now here, look at these pictures. What can living things do and non-living things cannot do? So we have kids are running, turtle is swimming, and butterfly is flying. Yes, living things can move by themselves, while the non-living things cannot do. Now, let's talk about these animals. The cheetah is chasing the antelope for food, and the antelope is running away from the cheetah. So, do you know what is important for animals to be able to move? Yes, correctly! Animals need to move to hunt for food or to escape from the danger. How about plants? Can plants move by themselves? No, actually. But here, plants can move some parts of themselves. These are the examples. The first one, the buttercups move to face the sun. Or this one, the Venus flytrap plant moves by closing its leaves to trap the insects. What can living things do? This is the second point. Can living things reproduce? Living things can reproduce or have young. Living things reproduce so that there will always be living things like them around. There are some types of animals. Some animals reproduce by laying eggs. Their young hatch from the eggs. So these are the examples. The turtle and the fish are laying the eggs. Next, horse and its foal. And here, elephant and its calf. Some animals give birth to live young. How about plants? Look at the picture. There are some watermelon seeds and its fruit. Many kinds of plants reproduce from seeds. Now, let's move on. Can living things grow? Now, look at these pictures. It is a cycle of a frog's life. From X, it becomes a tadpole, and it can be bigger into an adult frog. A young plant also can be bigger day by day. It becomes an adult plant. So do humans. From baby, it can be bigger day by day. It becomes kids, and then it becomes adult. So, we can conclude that living things can grow. What else? What can living things do? This is the fourth point. Can living things sense and respond? Can you imagine this situation? Okay, this is my brother who is playing drum loudly and is very annoying. Because I have sense of hearing, I hear the loud noise here. So what is my response? So here I respond by covering ears with my hands. The other example, the millipede senses and responds to danger by coiling. And this plant, the leaves of the mimosa plant sense and respond to touch by closing up. In conclusion, living things can sense and respond to changes around them. Let's move on. Let's differentiate the living things and non-living things. Look at this one. I have a robot. It can move and it can respond when I give instruction. But why is it a non-living thing? Yes, even it can move or it can uh, walk, it can do that because of the battery. 
the battery makes it walk or move. But here, the robot doesn't have the other features that a living thing has. It doesn't need air, it doesn't need water, and food to stay alive. It's the end of our lesson, so let's review what have you learned here. We will differentiate between the living things and non-living things. So, in living things, they need air, water, and food to stay alive. They can move by themselves, they can reproduce, they can sense and respond to the changes around them, and they can grow. But the non-living things here, they cannot do. They don't have all the features all of living things have. Thank you for watching my explanation here. So, see you on the next lesson. Be happy, stay healthy, 